Hello, welcome to Creative Matthew. This is a voiceover. My microphone wasn't on. So hear me. Here I am getting started. And I'm going to let you kind of figure out what I'm drawing as I go along. I'm using charcoal, a charcoal pencil technically. So it's like a graphite pencil, like you'd take to school or um, that type of thing. But instead of being graphite inside, it's compact um, charcoal. I don't know if they actually just take actual charcoal or what they do. But I mean, I know with charcoal, um, like vine charcoal and willow charcoal, those are actually it's charcoal, but it's made specifically in a unique way. They take the vine of a of a grape plant and they put it to a kiln without any oxygen. You need oxygen for fire to happen, but without the oxygen, if you have the heat and what would be considered the fuel source, the fuel source in this case, the vine piece of vine can actually turn into charcoal, much like a um, like charcoal cloth type thing, you're pretty much taking it without it burning, without the fire, it doesn't break down. So you still have, but you still have that change in the chemical thing, so it becomes charcoal. And they do the same thing with willow branches and stuff, smaller or bigger. Um, and so this is char um, a charcoal pencil. And so here I am. Mm, I'm not sure if you can tell what it is just yet. I'm going to let you figure it out. Yeah, see, I'm starting off with a drawing. You might be able to figure it out by now. I don't know, tell me how quickly it took you to figure this out. It's starting to become a little bit more obvious. You could probably figure it out by now. Right now, the one eye doesn't look off, but you'll see me get to it later, and you'll see me trying to correct it. Right now, I'm working on that ear, which you'll see me actually erasing. Yes, professionals erase. And if you don't believe me, and if you don't believe I'm a professional, I can show you, talk to you, I can direct you to somebody who you can know as a professional. Aaron Blaze, he was an animator at Disney. He worked on Lion King, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, and others. And if you actually go to his YouTube channel, you can look up Aaron Blaze Art, or The Art of Aaron Blaze, or just Aaron Blaze on the YouTube search, and you should find his channel, and watch some of his live streams. They all, they're all saved on his YouTube channel. You just go to the live section. And you'll find all those things. <clears throat> and just watch. You'll watch him doing this. And you'll, like, especially if you can find the ones that are more traditional. But even the ones that are digital, the digital ones, you'll see him undo. Or you'll see him scrap a thing like, oh, I don't like this. And change it. But if you go to the traditional ones, you'll see him erase. You'll see him erase. And then um, oftentimes it's like throw a whole one like, you know what, I don't even like this, I'm throwing the whole thing away. Professionals don't just get it right the first time. That does not exist. They're still human. I mean, they still require experimentation when it comes to trying this in their drawing or trying this in their painting, and whether they like it or not. And as they do that, they start getting more and more comfortable with that technique or whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. In this case, it's just a simple charcoal little puppy dog and so in this case it's mainly just making sure I'm getting things looking right and doing it at the beginning I actually cropped out a little bit of the eye um, erasing it didn't take me very long but I'm like it still wasn't worth showing you every time I erased it on that eye so here I am trying to get it right and stuff like that getting close I'm almost there 
though as I'm doing this, I'm adding more and more darkness to it, which I'm not quite liking on the outside of the eye. But I get it to where I like it later on. You'll see. So it just shows that if you're starting out with art or anything like that, no matter how long you've been doing it, I've been doing this since I was a little kid, you still are not going to be somehow perfect at it. It's still going to be something that you have to learn and continue to grow. You notice I have a nice little small nose, I have a nice bigger rounder head, and I have big eyes. That's cutesy proportions. If you look at a little baby, especially like a newborn or something in nature, you see little nose, big eyes, and a big round head. And you have baby proportions. Same thing with animals. It's the same general idea. Here I am drawing in the towel. I made the part, one part a bit too thick. I need to thin it out. And after I um, finished the drawing, I actually took a short break. And then um, I came back to it. So in the video, you'll see it transition from the drawing to when I first start um, actually shading it in. And I did shade in the pupils just to make sure the eyes were going to work off camera. And it should be coming up close where it does the transition. Here it is. And so now it's time for the shading. And you can see that the pupils are all shaded in. Here I am trying to get that paw quite right. The one paw is actually on the ground, so there's weight on it, which means that the bottom of the paw is going to be pushed up a little bit, which is going to flatten it out. The other paw is supposed to be up in the air, about to take a step. So that's, that's also why one paw is a little bit further um, down than the other one. Now this puppy has areas of just white fur and areas of kind of tannish brown. The white fur is obviously, I'm actually going to mark out where the white fur is. And some of that white fur is in shadow, where I'm actually drawing now, that's indicating a white fur, but that's in shadow. And so, though it's white fur, I don't want it to be as bright as some other areas. So you'll see kind of what I do with that, and to try to get it to where it still looks kind of like it's supposed to be white. And sometimes you just use that um, paper as the light color for shadow, meaning you don't actually put any kind of pigment or um, charcoal anywhere on that area, you leave it just a paper color. Because that's what, when you have a mid-tone gray or mid-tone tan, the paper itself can act as part of that color, part of that um, value. In this case, it's just black and white. And so we're only dealing with value. Value meaning light and dark. A dark value is black, and the, the lightest value is white. You have, a, and usually they do the scale one zero to 10, zero being completely white, 10 being completely dark black. And so you're just using that value scale. And so that paper is already a certain part of that value scale. And so take that to your advantage. Right now I'm doing the, the muzzle part because it's nice and white and it's right in the sun. This is, the image is from the, of the puppy is outside with a nice bright sunlight. And so the sunlight's coming directly from above hitting the puppy. Now there is bounce light and other types of things, but in this thing I'm just doing a, a very basic lighting just to make it look cute. I like cute. The thing I'm using there is actually a little holder for a pencil. The pencil I'm using is so small I need that little extension thing to actually hold it. So you can kind of see it right there. I'm showing you a little bit of it there. I don't know what I did with that. I was pointing at something. I think I was talking about this, the, um, the little chest area of the dog. I don't know about how it's in shadow. This is just me going along, shading it. Nice view of my hand and of my watch. Casio watch. And no, they're not, I'm not sponsored by them. I don't have any sponsors, I'm brand new. Now, if Casio wanted to sponsor me, 
I'd be more than happy to. I the only watch I've been using since probably since high school, which have been over twenty years, has been Casio. An extender can hold just a regular flex pencil or ones that are a little bigger. It's maybe just if when the pencil gets really small, like you've sharpened it down to where it's almost non-existent, you can use that to keep using it for a while. So that pencil, after this, was finally down to the last little bit where it was no longer sharpenable, even with a razor blade. So I end up um, going to a different one. I don't actually use it in this picture, but I put a different one where the old one was. So now, now I'm using a um, the thing you actually are seeing. That's a holder for actually whiteboard. That's a whiteboard marker. Um, that's the plastic outer case of it. I'm telling you this on the camera, though my but. I was showing you that case, and it's like what I have inside is one of those willow charcoal, but one of the smaller willow charcoals. And I just, the case I actually had to take apart, take out the insides and stuff, and adapt it to hold that. It wasn't designed for that, obviously, but I wanted something that I can hold it with so I didn't have to use my hands. I like to get, I don't mind getting a little bit of charcoal on my hands. Like you see, I'm probably getting a little bit on my hands there, but I don't like getting it all over the place. So I like having something to, um, actually hold the charcoal. Now what I'm using there is a blending stump. It's just a piece of paper wrapped around into a pretty much looks like a pencil but it's all just paper and what it does is it helps blend the charcoal or graphite. It can be used for colored pencils but those are harder to um, blend. Another thing you can use it for to blend is oil pastels and I'm assuming chalk pastels too. I, the last time I used chalk pastels was back in junior high I think so I haven't used them in a while. I got some ordered, so when those come in, I'll be using those. But, so the um, blending stumps, the little paper things that you use to blend, those are actually pretty nice. I like those. Now the technique I'm using here is where I'm like just adding, I'm slowly adding up the dark, building it up, and stuff like that. Another technique you can use, and this is what Aaron Blaze likes to do for his charcoal, is he'll do the drawing, he'll do a rough drawing with the vine charcoal, and then he'll rub it down so he can still kind of see the lines enough that's a guideline. Then he'll do a normal charcoal pencil, which will be a little bit stronger um, line work. He'll do that over the top and get a nice refined drawing. And then what he does is takes his he takes charcoal powder, which is just the charcoal but ground up into a powder, so that you can then wipe it all over the paper. And he wipes it all over the paper. And then he uses his kneaded eraser, which is that eraser you saw me using. It's called a kneaded eraser because the way you actually get the graphite off the front of it so that you can keep using it without it um, pretty much just rubbing around is you knead it. You move it around, you, squish, you stretch it, you squish it, and you do that, and that helps to put the graphite deeper into it so that you can still keep using it, allowing it to last a long time. And so he uses his kneaded eraser to start erasing out that charcoal powder. So he's taking away some of the charcoal to bring about the lighter values. And then over then um, over the top of that, he'll add his white charcoal pencil. Or he'll use, use a Conte thing, which I have one. I never actually use it for this. I It's more for bigger images. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can use it for whatever you want. But I'm saving mine for bigger um, charcoal things that need to cover more space with white. There's my blending stump. You can kind of see that's just a round up piece of paper. I mean, technically you could probably make your own, but I tried, it didn't work very well. I don't know if they use a special type of paper or if it's just because it's how, of how tightly wound it is. They're not very expensive at all. So it's not, not necessary to do your own, but I just like to figure out how to create my own of certain things. See, those aren't actually eyebrows. Dogs don't have eyebrows. That's supposed to be the, the little. There is a little bit of an Indian area, rise, raised area right above the eyes. And so that's supposed to be kind of the crease. It's a little emphasized. I mean, it blends in a little bit better later on, but 
still it helps to add some personality to the character or to the drawing your picture and if you were animating you could use that as a way to give expression so that they almost look like eyebrows and you can use that to emphasize anger or sadness or whatever expression you want the reference photo that I'm using the tail actually was in a different position but and I didn't like it where it was so I changed it still not sure if that's the better place either but eh. at this point it's what I did so and you'll see the ending where I actually show you the finished picture there is a little bit of a tangent with the ear and the, one of the legs I fixed that in the final image and you'll see that later on no some people they'll try not to mix the white charcoal with the um, regular charcoal because it makes kind of this it pretty much makes what they call a muddy color I don't find it muddy I, I think it's I like it because it's like it's a different um, shade of gray that I can get rather than just using the charcoal and just trying to make a little bit light charcoal or that I mix the white with the charcoal to give a little bit different color of gray not really color but different um, value of gray and I use that to my advantage And this is one of those things where, if, since I do did forget to turn on my microphone, I could have just sped this up and did it as one of those type, but I don't know if those are better or not. Like, I like watching people just paint and draw, and without it being an official tutorial, just for just them drawing and painting for fun, which is why I watch Aaron Blaze. In his, it's not quite t tutorial, though he does have it open for questions. And so if you ever go, if he does his live streams, um, just the general public ones, Friday at it's let's see at one o'clock his time which is um, Florida so whatever time that zone that is um, so it's one o'clock his time see so I gotta figure out that, what that is in your time and watch one of his live streams and you can ask questions um, there's a ton of questions being asked so don't be surprised if they can't quite get to it though usually there's less being asked on Facebook than YouTube YouTube there's a whole lot more so if you want a greater chance of getting your question answered, I go to YouTube. I mean, I go to Facebook. And they live stream. They use um, a program to live stream to different sites at once. And so you can watch it on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter. And I think, I don't know if they do TikTok or not. I don't know if TikTok can or not. But anyway, I actually came across Aaron Blaze's site from another YouTuber named Proko. His name is Stan Proko Pinko, but he goes by Proko on YouTube. And he had, like, I was, learning, I was looking at how to do f heads from different angles, and he had different tutorials for that. You can s pause, you can see the little paper sticking out. That one's pretty beat up that little blending stump I end up throwing that one away after this but anyway so Proko like he had different tutorials and stuff and one of this he talked about Aaron Blaze I think he was doing a drawing or something of Aaron Blaze or he was doing a YouTube video with him and so that's how I came across Aaron Blaze and I like watching just people just paint or draw for fun and just not where it's not just a tutorial it's more just hey I'm just doing this for fun and letting you guys come along for the ride I like that and there's not a whole lot of youtubers that do that most of them it's just tutorials it's like here's how you do this here's how you do that which is needed but there's so many of those ones I want some where you just draw and paint and you can just watch and, and enjoy the ride I do like having some sort of like with Aaron Blaze nice part of it's his is yes people ask questions but sometimes those questions are more random and it's fun hearing him answer or hearing the little um, kind of him, his son, and his business partner. There's just a conversation they end up having while they're doing this. It's fun. And it's appropriate for all ages. They try to keep it nice and clean for all ages. So if you have little kids that want to, that you think would be good, I'd have them watch it. It's better than a lot of other YouTube channels. And it's also showing them like art. Letting him appreciate modern art.
So this, and they said this dog had little white areas and other areas. I'm trying to emphasize that, like, the one I just barely did, it's a lightest tan, but it's still darker than the white. So I'm trying to give it a little, a little bit darker than the paper, but not by much. I'm using a lot of the paper color, or not color, but tone, to try to make it within that value range. Not really tone, but value. Yeah, I'm working on the other paw. And my blending stump. Oh, no, not yet, not yet. There's the blending stump. If you're looking into getting into charcoal, I mean, Daniels has some good brands, but I, I've i never found any that were really bad. I found some that blend better than others. Um, though, if you want to really blend the charcoal, getting some vine charcoal, which you can actually find at Walmart, that's where I usually buy mine from, or willow charcoal, which I don't remember if Walmart had the willow charcoal. I know it had the vine charcoal. Yeah, that actually blends pretty well. That's usually softer charcoal. Some of them might be a little harder, but for the most part, that's usually softer. But if you want to get like charcoal pencils, I've never found any that are really bad. I found some that are a little harder than others that don't blend as well. But those those I use for drawing. Then I like to use those for drawing. As you see, I'm using a lot of more of the like that one that's in the <laughs> the whiteboard marker holder. I'll pause. That is a um, mall stick. What that means is. That's something you use if you don't want to get your hand in the charcoal. And I'm showing you exactly how to use it there. It's literally just a wooden dowel with something on the end, something roundish on the end. You can make yourself. I just use a old tennis ball that I put on. And that way you can push it put down and you can use that to keep your hand out of the charcoal. Only problem with this is that that pad is not secured down. And so you'll see it start to move. But anyway, yeah, the charcoal in that little whiteboard holder is just that's a little bit that's the um, willow charcoal but it's a, it's, you can get willow charcoal that's pretty big or you can get it kind of small that one's holding a smaller one and I use that just for blending I don't usually use the charcoal pencils that much for blending I do a little bit if I want to keep some of the texture because it, it, the charcoal pencils will actually um, they'll actually stay into the paper a little bit more they won't rub off as easily and so the benefit of that is that, one, if you're doing a drawing, you can keep your drawing around. But also, if you want to actually add some fur texture to where it looks like little strands of fur, I'd use the charcoal pencil for that. You can still use the vine charcoal and stuff for that. Because if you press it hard enough, it's still going to get into the paper where it's not going to be so easily erased. This is getting close to being done. Doing the ears, you know, the, the eyes, nose. The, I think I do the nose first, then the eyes. And then just some finishing stuff here and there. And then I have my little cute puppy. Now it's obviously not super realistic. It's not super cartoonish either. It's still it's probably closer to the more realism realm than it is cartoon. But it's still not realistic. There's some artists that will do it very realistic. And I, mean, I like that as a proof of concept. I'm like, okay, I've done this realistic just to show that I can. Outside, of, But then after that, it's like, nope, I'm keeping with my style. Which is nice with art. You have so many different ways to do things. Especially digital nowadays. With digital, there's so many different ways you can do things. That you can have all your unique styles and stuff like that. And with traditional, there's also different ways to do things. So there's ways to do it realistically, which takes a lot longer, or to do it a little bit more cartoony, or not say cartoony, but just, I don't know, kind of like this, where it's, it's still based more upon real proportions and only a little bit exaggerated. 
but where the fur isn't being painted in. So you don't see all the fur, you see more just, um, you still see the shape and the, and the dimension of the thing to degree, but you don't see all the little different fur texture and details. Charcoal is a pretty forgiving medium. If you don't press it too hard into the paper, you can pretty much erase it off. So it makes it a lot easier and stuff. Especially if you use something called charcoal paper. There's like a pad of charcoal paper that you can buy. And it's designed that the weave is very tight. So unless you press really hard, you're not going to get the charcoal really deep into it. And so usually you can erase it off, completely off. Allowing you to pretty much take off whatever mistakes or erasing out highlights and that sort of thing a lot easier. White charcoal doesn't seem to race very well, but that's also because it's not truly charcoal. If I remember correctly, it's like some sort of carbon, carbon or pretty much like a calcium type thing, calcium carbonate type thing. And I'm doing the eyes, which means I'm getting close to being done. All I really did with the finished one was fix that little tangent with the ear and the leg and then add a slight amount of shading for the floor. I thought about adding some sort of little doggy toy or something, but the dog's supposed to be moving. And, and that doggy toy is more of its, I'd rather do if it's sitting, indicating that it's sitting in its little home. This is the dog moving, so I didn't really want to add something like that. I could have tried to add some sort of background, but I'm like, nah, let's let the dog be the main focus on this one. my blending stump. You can see the little pinkish, that's because I was using it for, I don't remember if it's colored pencil or oil pastel. I think I was using it for, to blend oil pastel. Oil pastel still I like, but it's also, it has an oil base, and so it's definitely stained. I think I'm pretty much done. I don't remember if I did anything more or not. But it should soon transition to the finished piece. So as it transitions to the finished piece, I'm going to say this is Creative Matthew. This is me doing it traditionally. Showing you how I do my traditional art. I'll do more traditional, more digital. I, look, I am doing a little bit more. Oh yeah, I forgot. I did the, the mouth wasn't quite finished. So I did some black there, it's just in one little spot because then I'm going to use my blending tool to blend it out to get underneath the whole lips. And there you go. So as I was saying, as this is Creative Matthew signing off. You'll still see the finished piece and I'll leave you on that finished piece. And hopefully subscribe, like. I'm mainly doing this to try to get companies to see me so I can get hired. But I can always use subscribers. So. Thank you very much.